God bless my brothers and sisters. It's another beautiful day to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Just wanted to share a little word today, brief word today. Um, just talking about how reading the word of God is so important. And if you just read it here and there, or you was taught particular things, um, about the Bible or about God that's not going to sustain you just like if you only drink water every other few days or you eat every other few days your body's not going to receive the correct nourishment the correct uh, water the correct food um, that it needs to sustain itself and to function and to survive so you can't treat the Bible the Bible says it's our daily bread Right, daily is something that re that, that happens um, every day. Right, so they say, give us this day our daily bread. Right, so we have to feed our, our spiritual man. If you're spiritual, because if you're spiritual, then your 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 spirit is going to need to be fed. Okay, when you if you're a human and, and you know you're just eating regular food, then your body has to be fed. Right. So if you're spiritual and you still eat regular food as well, then you have to do both. So you can't just eat once a week or eat, uh, you know, twice a week to sustain yourself. Your body needs you to eat every day. Okay. You can't just drink water. Uh, I didn't put no bug spray on the day. You can't. Um, I thought it was going to be okay in this little shelter, this little uh, gazebo thing. But they still attacking me. I didn't feel like having that uh, bug spray on. But um, you can't eat once or twice a week and think that you're going to still have strength. Think that you're, you're going to still be able to function. Think that you're going to be able to think the way you're supposed to be able to think. So that's the same way it is with God's word. The word of God prepares you the same way when you eat. It gives you strength. It gives you nourishment. And when you drink water... It hydrates you, you know, it, it gives your body a uh, fuel, so to speak, to keep going. So if you don't have the word of God and everything that you're going to go through in life, it's going to be the, the, the ways of darkness coming against you. And the only way you can fight darkness is by the word of God, by the sword of the spirit. OK, that's what Remember, the Bible never says that we're going to repel the fiery darts the fiery uh, darts of the, uh, of, of the enemy of Satan. It says that the, the, the faith, you know, the shield of faith is what's going to, you know, protect us from the darts hitting us. Then we got the helmet, you know, the breastplate, the sword. So we got all these things that's only given to us by the word. Okay. So the armor of God is the word of God. Okay. So if you're only, you know, leaving the house with your your helmet, but no shield and no sword, then you can't fight back and then you can't protect yourself. You know, your other body is exposed. The other parts of your body is exposed to um, attacks from the enemy, right? So to speak. But this is the point that I'm trying to make. You have to read that word. You have to study that word as your life depends it. You have to read it slowly, repeatedly, and attentively, daily. So you can know how to function the same way if you were trying to work a job or join some type of police force or anything. You have to learn the codes and have to learn what laws are being broken. You just can't wake up one day and, and know that this person is breaking the law. So you're going to pull them over. You can't guess what that person is doing. You have to know. So a police officer has to be trained and have to be taught to be able to... Uh, uh, know what laws are and know how people are breaking the law in order to pull them over and to um, enforce the law. So if the police officer never went to the academy or he never was taught the codes or never taught the law, then how would he be able to pull you over? How would a police officer know that you're speeding if he doesn't know what the speeding uh, uh, laws are or what the speed limit is? How would he pull you over? So that means that the police officer has to be consciously aware of the speed limits in order to know how fast you're supposed to go and how slow you're supposed to be going, right? So he has to be educated. 
So you see in life, people are educated. They're not walking around assuming, hey, you're breaking the law. Assuming there's laws that are made. And if you break those laws or you disobey those laws or you rebel against those laws, then they will uh, enforce the law against you. You know, the punishment that comes from breaking the law. So this is the same way it is as being a believer. You have to know God's word. There's no way that you guys are claiming to be believers and you don't know the words in the Bible. You can sit there and say whatever you want to say. You can say whatever you feel. They didn't give us 27 books for no reason. And people didn't die. And they didn't put their blood, sweat, and tears into those epistles, into those letters, into spreading the gospel for no reason. You understand? You, you think these people that y'all look up to in this world today that died and were, you know, black history month or black figures or whatever, and African-American people who were pioneers, you think that they did it because they don't want, um, you know, to, for those things to be remembered or, or to be obeyed or followed? So you thinking that Paul and them gave their lives and Peter and all these men gave their lives for the word of God just so that it, it doesn't have to be obeyed. That, that's no point. It's no purpose. So they did those things because they're designed to be obeyed. They did those things because they're meant to be obeyed. So if you just like, oh, I don't have to read the, all the Bible. You don't want to read what them brothers told you. You don't want to read everything and to know, to become more familiar with the word, to become more intimate with the word, to know more about the Apostle Paul, to know more about Apostle Peter and John and James and all these brothers. You don't want to know, you know, um, how Christ lived or the way that he, um, look at this ant that was calling on me. You don't want to know, that's one of the big ones too. I had to squish them with my hand. You know, I, I, I tried to flick them away. That brother came back. I had to take him out. Smashed him with my palm. Um, he was one of those big old, one of those big ants. Them, them big red ones. So, um, he was on my neck. So, you know, reading the word, you become more intimate. Y'all sit there and watch movies and you'll watch a movie and you'll watch all the sequels that come after the movie. You're watching Avengers 1, you're watching The Matrix 1, Matrix 2, Avengers 2, Avengers 3. You know, you, you'll watch them all. The Walking Dead, all the different, the, the Dawn of the Dead. You know, you know all the characters, Rick and Sasha and... All the people that's in these, these TV shows and in these movies, you know them because you done got intimate. You learned their character. You're able to have talks about it because you're interested. So it goes to show you that many people are not interested in God's word because they have no desire to, to, to read or to study and to truly see the truth. This is how you know what the Bible says about uh, they're going to depart from the faith and, and teaching lies and hypocrisies. You know, giving to do some spirit and doctrines of devils. This is how you know it's true because it's Christianity that was taught, and they don't teach you to get intimate with the Word of God because then you won't be in their churches. They don't teach you to really read and study and and do exactly what the Bible say. They'll tell you like to read and stuff so you can make yourself feel good, but they're not telling you to do those things um, and follow those things because they're not following them, right? So. In life, if you if you have a passion for something or a strong desire, you're going to put forth your all. You're going to spend time reading, studying, applying. You're going to become intimate with those people in, in their lives. The same way you are with movies and TV shows and, and music and biographies and different things like that. You know, you want to know more. You want to go further. You want to go deeper. You want to go higher. See, so if a person, the Bible is here, you got 27 books. That's, that's telling you, you know, where Christians came from, how we got here, our birth. We can look at our, our, the birth of our religion in the New Testament. We can see the birth of, of our religion, which is the Christian religion in the New Testament. So who wouldn't want to make sure, hey, today, am I living like the, the first generation Christians? Today, am I living like, am I thinking like the first generation Christians? Today, am I walking and talking like the first generation Christians? That's what I mean. Even if I was, even if, if I'm just saying, even myself, if I was going to a church, I wouldn't be content just listen to a pastor only, right? I'll be wanting to read the word because you got to think a pastor, the, these false pastors are only, I'm, I'm just saying, even if let's just, they're false pastors, but just say you don't know that they're false pastors, right? I mean, 99% are false, but just say you don't know that. 
they're still only speaking an hour or two about something that's whatever they're talking about or whatever Bible verse they're misinterpreting. You're still only learning not even 95, 98 percent of the Bible. You're just hearing a one percent of it. And most of them don't even preach the word. They just make up stuff and use verses to, to support their, um, their, their, their ideologies or whatever point they want to make. Right. So my point that I'm trying to make is that you're still not going to know enough about the Bible if you went to church for 30 years in your life. You understand? Because you're only going one day out of the week, which is Sunday, right? Many of y'all don't make it to Bible studies, right? All the stuff that they made up. And um, he's only talking, and a lot of times they coming up with stuff that's, that they don't even be biblical. And a lot of times they use only a few Bible verses, and they'll talk for like an hour, maybe. Maybe an hour or two, right? You're not going to learn what you need to learn an hour or two. That's why the Bible said in the book of Acts, they continue daily. And when you read the scriptures and you read the epistles in the New Testament, you see that them believers, they stayed with God. Even disciples, when Jesus chose them, they never went back home. Peter never went back home to his wife. Those was with the Lord every day. Whenever you read, you read the four gospels, tell me, do you see the disciples not being with Jesus? Remember, when we're reading the four gospels, we're reading Jesus' life, Right? Him preaching, him teaching, him uh, walking in power and authority and all these great things, right? That's what you're seeing in the, in, the, in the four Gospels. What do you see the disciples not being with him? What do you see the apostles not being there with him? You don't, right? So they was with him every day from the time that he said, follow me, right? They was with him because that's the only way you're going to grow. You've been here all your life. You got to think. If I'm talking about God right now to y'all, right? And I'll be up here for an hour or two. Okay, just think about this. If I'm up here and, and, and you're learning what you have not learned or you haven't heard before, and I'm teaching you about God, right? Once I get off this Facebook Live, what is most of y'all going to go do? Get on your phone, go look at TV, talk to people who's worldly, hear worldly things. You're not going to hear what Brother Ronald is saying. Okay, that, that's just a fact. So how do you grow how do you learn? How does faith increase when a person is only spending an hour or two out of the day to listen to some false pastor in the church talk about God? You can't. You see what I'm saying? Because you're hearing less about what you need to sustain you and you're around and hearing more what you don't need. Right. That's 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 influencing you and, and you're soaking up like a sponge the negative and wicked and evil things that come from the world. Right. That's just a fact. So you're hearing less about the things that you need and you're spending more time. Even in your dreams, you're having dreams that's worldly. Even when you're daydreaming, you're daydreaming about things of the world. You're having visions about worldly things, seeing yourself driving cars and having jewelry or having sex or whatever the case may be. So you're you're spending more time. You're spending more time in the things of the world than you are spending the time with things of God. That's why you see with Jesus, when he chose the disciples, they was with him up until the time he ascended into glory. When you look at the, the book of Acts, they was with them people. You see, they built the church. All the people, you, you, you didn't say, oh, you know, they said, you know, 3,000 was added to the church. And the Lord, I mean, 3,000 was baptized, killing these ants. 3,000 was baptized. And they continued steadfastly and apostles' doctrine, right? And you read the rest. It's in Acts chapter 2. So that verse 37, okay? So you clearly see that there's no way that a person is going to be able to grow in faith. You have to know that word. Paul didn't write all those epistles just to write them. He wrote them with the intentions of, of, of believing and knowing that people wanted to learn more about God. And they wanted to hear more about this mysterious this amazing, you know, supernatural God. And the only way that you're going to learn that is by his word. He's not a human being where he's going to come down and talk to you. He's a spirit. The Bible says he never seen his shape nor his form. And no man's ever seen God and live. So the only way that this righteous and powerful and holy God can, can communicate to people that's in darkness, that's in the world, before they even get his spirit, is by telling him. And then he gives you the spirit. If you obey it and do what it says, then now you're a part of him.
You understand? If he was to come to this world with his glory and his power, everybody would drop dead who don't have the Holy Spirit because darkness can't be in his presence. That's the fact. So the word is safety. The word is a safe place for you to be able to read about him, learn about him, you know, make a choice whether you want to obey him or not. And then that's the that's the word is the invitation. OK, the word is the is the is the invite. OK, that's what is. That's what the that's what the word is. Then once you receive the spirit, then you become one of his family. That's the way it works. OK, so if you're not reading the Bible, there's no way that you're living as a Christian. How? You don't know what to do. You don't know what the word says as a Christian that we're supposed to do. A police officer that never went to the academy didn't learn the codes. We got 1047, 1015, 10, you know, they learn those words. You have to know, you have to know what the what laws are and, and, and how laws can be broken in order to understand if a person is breaking the law. So a police can't just say, oh, I'm going to pull them over because, you know, uh, they got blonde hair. That's not a law against having blonde hair. But if you're speeding or if you're driving, right, if you're speeding or, or if, you're, if you're driving fast or reckless, there's laws against those things. Reckless driving, you know, speeding. So there's all laws. If you don't have your seatbelt on. These are laws. So that means that the police officer has to learn these things in order to enforce it. So how do you know what God hates? How do you know what God doesn't want you to do? How do you know how you're not supposed to think? You're not supposed to speak. You're not supposed to act. You don't. You're just going off of whatever mommy or daddy told you or whatever you read off of Google or whatever you just think on your own. There's 27 books where they're trying to tell you, hey, this is what God wants you to do. What, what book tells you how to think in the New Testament? What book tells you the exact words you're supposed to be thinking on? Can y'all tell me? Without looking. It's in Philippians. You see that? So you just can't read Matthew by itself. Philippians says, think on these things. What book tells you that Jesus Christ was a man of no reputation? Philippians. What book tells you that people that do such sins are worthy of death? Not only those who do them, but find pleasure in those who do them. Romans. What book tells you about tribulation and anguish upon every soul of man that does evil? What book tells you about the wrath of God being revealed from heaven? Okay, what book tells you that? You have to know, because how would you know if you're doing things that's going to provoke God's wrath, right? So, um, think about what I'm telling y'all, right? You have to know. What book tells you if you look upon a woman with lust? Matthew. What book talks about uh, false prophets and false teachers making merchandise of you? The book of Peter. What two men, what two men mentioned this word right here? Luke, Paul, and Peter. Come on, brothers and sisters. What book tells you that if any man come and bring not this doctrine... Don't allow him into your house, nor bid him Godspeed. That's in the book of 2 John, chapter 1. What book tells you about false brethren preaching false doctrines? That's Galatians. What book tells you, right, that God gave these callings to the church? Ephesians. What book tells you that let it not once be named amongst you as becoming of saints. Ephesians. What book tells you to set your affections on things above and not things on earth? Colossians. What book tells you that, that for our gospel came not unto you in word only? First Thessalonians. You see? So where, this is the point I'm making. What book talks about you're drawn away from your own lustful desires and entice. That's the book of James. Okay. What book talks about them being sensual and not having a spirit? Right. Jude. What book, what epistle is identical to each other? 
the book of Peter and the book of Jude. Similar. Read it. You have to know this. Because then how are you going to know that what someone is saying is false or not? The Bible commands you to not to believe every spirit, but to try the spirit. This is why there's so many false churches. This is why there's some people, oh, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. You don't even know what you're commanded to do to be a Christian. You don't know what we're supposed to, we're not supposed to do. When you go to a job, you just can't say, I work there. You got to be hired. Jesus said, you're not worthy to be my disciple. He said, if any man put his hand to a plow and look back, it's not fit into the kingdom of God. Jesus talks about picking up your cross, denying yourself. To lose your life is to gain your life. You have to know those things. Come on. What did Jesus tell you to seek first? The King of God rest is all things to be added to you. That's in Matthew. What chapter? Come on. You see what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters? You have to know that word. I done went through almost a whole New Testament with you. You want to go to Revelations to the seven churches? You want to go to Revelations to when John said he was, he was at the Adam of Potanamos and he was in the spirit on the Lord's day? Come on, brothers and sisters. Like, what do you want to talk about? So there's no way somebody's going to come and teach me some false doctrine when I'm sitting here breaking down all the New Testament books. What was Matthew for? To show you Christ having the highest order on earth. That was the king. That's why they show you the genealogies. Four generations. Showing you that he is the Christ. And that he came from Judah. That's right. Then you got Mark, Luke, and John. Why in the book of John was there no birth? Because God is the be, is the beginning and the end and the beginning. He, you know, God, God's not born as a as a human being is born. That's why you read the book of John. It doesn't show him being born, because he's God. That's right. You understand, Jehovah, God, right? This is what I'm showing you. The Great I Am. Okay, God Almighty. This is what you're seeing. Then you see where they show you having him having a, the lowest order on earth, which is the servant. Then you see him being, then they talk about him being the son of man. You see, being an ideal man. This is all Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. These are all the prophecies, all the characteristics, the personality, the persons of Christ being mentioned in those four gospels. That's right. The king, the servant, the son of man, and God. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You see that? And they break it down. They tell you that in the scriptures, in the Old Testament scriptures. They show you that. Okay, he was the first man, Adam, was made a quickening spirit. And the second Adam was made, I mean, I'm sorry, the first Adam was made a living soul. The second Adam was made a quickening spirit. So they break that down, but you can find that in the four gospels too. Come on now, brothers and sisters. You see? So this is all I'm trying to explain to you. Without you knowing that word, there's no way that you're a Christian. You don't know, there's 27 books. I just broke down key important scriptures. And all those books. And if you don't know them, you don't, you can't recite them. You're, they're not, they're not, uh, bubbling up out of you, right? Out of bust of the heart, the mouth speak. There's no way that you're being a Christian. You're, you're thinking you're being a Christian. You're thinking that you're doing whatever someone told you, but you're not, you don't have the familiar, you're not familiar with the word. So to even know what is and what isn't. Okay. What does it tell you? Don't say you're going to go somewhere, buy, sell, and get grain. Here, you know, hearing this in, in, in a year or whatever the case may be. What book tells you that? They say, you're supposed to say it's the Lord's will. Where says it says at? How many of y'all be like, yeah, tomorrow or next week, next year, I'm going to do some that. You see that? You ain't read that book because you disobeyed it. You are disobeying God by sitting here believing these people on, on the Internet. All this Greek and Hebrew is of God. The Bible said that the Antichrist cannot say Jesus Christ came in flesh and blood. Okay? They say deny the Father and the Son. Jesus Christ is Lord. God is the Father. Right? So you have the Godhead. God the Father, Jesus Christ the Son, which is Lord, the Messiah, the Christ, and the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Right? And the Lord came in flesh and blood. That's right. So the Bible tells you to try the Spirit. You're not supposed to just accept anybody as being a believer. Because the Bible already told you that many are going to be false. Okay, let's get into it. If you're not really reading the Bible or you don't read the Bible, you will believe whatever you want about God, yourself, and the Bible. See, that's the fact. You think that God sees you the way you see yourself. 
You don't understand that the word of God tells you who you currently are. Okay? If you're fornicating, you're a whoremonger. Okay? If you're committing sins, the wage of sin is death. Okay? This is what the Bible tells you. The Bible talks about, what does it tell you in the New Testament not to be slothful in business? What does it tell you? What does it say that, the, that, that women were being idle? What does it tell you at? So how do you know being laziness is wrong? Unless you can tell me where it says not to be slothful in business. What does it say that they was, they was being idle? What does the Bible say that they were dead where they were living as far as for the women? You don't know. So how do you know that you're not doing the same thing the women were doing? How you know you're not how you know you're not conforming to the world? You see? You don't. So this is what I'm telling you. You cannot be a Christian and not know those 27 books. Because each book has vital information. This is why us as servants of God, we are commanded to preach the word in season and out of season, apt to teach, convince the gainsayers, because we have the truth. Okay, somebody could be ignorant. Yeah, somebody could be ignorant. Somebody could be not educated. But when you have the truth, right, then there's no excuse. If they deny it, they deny it. But you still gave them the truth. If someone doesn't believe that water is good for them or food is good for them, they can believe that. But then when we come with the proof and the details and the truth, then that shows them, right? That, get, that was an opportunity for them to know the truth. Most false pastors, all these false pastors avoid using the Bible chapter and verse back to back back to back right they avoid it because if they were to speak the way i'm speaking they would have to be living it so they were to be like yeah in the book of acts 5 you know peter told ananias that he lied to the holy ghost they're not going to say that they're going to say look he kept back some money this is why he died that's not why he died because that corinthians tells you in, in in chapter 9 that don't give uh grudgingly or out of necessity because god love a cheerful giver okay the Bible tells you as it was freely give, freely give, right? So then Peter says, silver and gold I have not. Peter's saying this after money was given in Acts 2. When did Peter pay for the man that gave the beautiful? You see that? So you have to know this word. You got to know what happened in Acts 1. You got to know what happened in Acts 2. You got to know what happened in Acts 3. You got to know what happened in Acts 4. You have to know what happened in Acts 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You have to know. So for instance, let's go to Acts 1. Okay, Jesus, Jesus is sending into heaven, right? They all, they, 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 they prayed and they, 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 they cast lots, drew lots, right? Because they wanted an, a, another person to be numbered with them as a 12 apostle because Judas killed himself and he betrayed Jesus, right? So they had two people, okay? They had two men, but the lot fell on Matthias and he was numbered amongst the 12, right? Now, it mentioned how he was with them all this time. So that's Acts 1. So let's fast forward all the way. Then Acts 1 verse 8 says that when you receive the spirit, you're going to receive power. Okay? So let's fast forward all the way from Acts 1. Let's go to Acts 10. What happened in Acts 10? Cornelius. Who was Cornelius? Soldier. That's right. One who, 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 who believed and feared God. His arms came, to, came up to God as a memorial. And he had a vision of an angel. Telling him to call for one whose name is Peter, who was with uh, Simon the Tanner by the seaside. You see that? So where do you want to go? Let's go all the way to Acts 20. It mentions what? That Christ purchased the church of God with his own blood. See? Keep going. When was Paul on trial? What happened when Paul was on trial? What, I, what, what happened when Paul's ship was wrecked and he went to an island? Who did he pray for? Who had a bloody flux? What type of animal bit Paul? And what did he do when it bit him? He shook it off into what? What did the people say when he when 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 the animal bit him? Come on, brothers, this is this is what I'm saying. So if somebody comes and say, yeah, the Bible says, you know, and, and the Lord, you'll know it's false. Because you it's like having a photographic memory, okay? Or being able to to look with your eyes open and see the word of God being written. So when the person saying the Bible says the Bible says the Bible, he's like, that's not what the Bible says. This is a false. This is this is what the Bible is talking about—a false teacher. This is a false brethren. This is a false, uh, you know, uh, apostle, prophet, whoever. These bugs are just coming out of nowhere. I'm about to get up. Oh, you see, you'll say this. This that, that's the false. That's the false doctrine. 
That's not biblical. You have to know it. Oh, yeah. See, y'all don't know in the book of Acts. See, John Jacob, Jingle Wallace Smith, he, uh, he ended up buying a big house. And, 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 and all the believers came and they was in there having church in this mansion. you like, mansion? Ain't no mention, ain't no, no mention of no mansion and believers in there in, 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 in the book of Acts. You got to know that because you read all the chapters. You remembered the verses. Ain't nothing about no big mansion and believers living in there. Come on now. It was a few houses mentioned about people having churches in those houses. Aquila Pasquilla one. You read it in Romans. They talk about it. But nowhere was a big mansion. You see what I'm trying to say? You'll catch that. They just trying to make their preaching sound so good. They just twisting up and throwing stuff in there. That's not even true. That's a false doctrine because if you believe that, you will never have faith because you can't have faith in what's not biblical. You can't have faith in what's not in the Bible. You can't have faith in something that's not true in God's word because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of man. Twisted up word of God, twisted up scripture. No, the word of God. So if a man is making up something that's not biblical, you can't have faith. You can't even pray it to God. You can't even stand on it as a promise. You can't even stand on it as something that's going to truly happen because it's not, it's fake. It's fiend words. It's made up. So you, you can't say, God, your words say, Lord, I'm praying your word back to you. You said that we're going to have a big mansion on earth with a whole bunch of believers that's going to have a big church and we're going to have a swimming pool in the backyard. Like, 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 like at the, like, like, like at Solomon's porch. That's not what the Bible say. People went into the pool and those who were crippled or possessed with evil spirits, whatever, whatever sickness they had, they got in there and they was made whole. That's what the words say. Not about no pool going to be in no mansion. Just, you, you know what I'm saying? Or about so we're going to have mansions in heaven. It's not about nothing on earth. You understand? So that's how you got to understand. You got to know the word. You cannot be a Christian. And don't know those 27 books that teaches us about our religion. These are, these are, these are rules, uh, uh, commands. Christ said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Where are they found? He said, why call ye me Lord and not do the things that I say? Well, what does he say? Well, they're only found in the word. The things that he say are found in the New, in the, in the New Testament, what Christ says. If you don't know them, how can you say you're being obedient? Your job gave you all these rules and regulations that you got to obey by. You got to obey. If you don't remember those things or you never you never were taught those things or you I mean, you never studied your 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 your, your book, then how are you going to be uh, you're going to be insubordinate and negligent of what he have of what your job has told you to do. The same way if a cop never went to the academy, a police never learned the codes. He never learned that, you know a seatbelt, you know, talking on the phone, whatever it is. He has to know the laws that are being passed. He got to know the new laws is being passed. He got to know the old laws. He got to know everything in order to uphold the law, in order to keep law and order. He has to. If not, he's going to be making up stuff. The same people make up. Oh, I'm Baptist. I'm Pentecostal. I'm apostolic. Because they haven't read that word. Y'all thinking because, listen, you got to understand that it's spirits that are in people that's making them to take that word the way they is and put their spin on it. That's the, that's the, that's the devil's doing that. The Bible talks about how Satan has ministers. You got to understand that. Okay. He say the, they, they, to their own destruction. You see? So you have to understand, you have to know what the words say. You have to know what the word says. Okay. So let me pull something y'all real quick. Woo, they biting my leg. Okay, watch this. Okay, hold on real quick. Let's go 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Just pull it up on Courtney's phone. 2 Corinthians 
chapter 11. Okay, let's go scroll down. Oh, I passed it. Okay, verse 13, 2 Corinthians 11, verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into apostles of Christ. Listen now. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. You see that? There is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. See that? That's right. You're supposed to be able to know. Now, how do we know what a, why did Paul call them uh, false apostles? Where do we find where he mentions about true apostles and how we would know what a true apostle looks like? Well, this is what I'm trying to tell you about knowing the word of God. You see, you go on YouTube. When, when I hang up this, this live, y'all go on Facebook and type in apostle. Just type in, in the search and just put apostle. Just type the word apostle. So many going to pop up, right? But without you knowing what the Bible says about an apostle, you're just going to be guessing. Right? Oh, I'm in 1 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians. So let's go 2 Corinthians 12 and 12. Okay, watch this. 2 Corinthians 12 and 12. Watch this. Truly, truly the signs of an apostle were wrought among you. You hear that? Truly the signs of an apostle were wrought. Means like worked. Are you seen, manifested, okay? Among you in all patience, in signs and wonders and mighty deeds. See that? That's our true apostles. Signs, wonders, mighty deeds, patience. Right? So people have the title of apostle. No signs, no wonders, no mighty deeds. See? So they avoid using that Bible. Chapter and verse. The false Christian. They, I'm telling you, today's Sunday. This, this is their day, the, the people of Christianity. There's no word Sunday in the Bible. No such thing as Sunday as a Christian. Man made it up. It's like people will hear the truth and have a hard time. But you see it in life, though. Look at the show Cheaters. A woman is clearly quoting another man. The man is still in denial. Denialism is real. People get caught doing all types of stuff. They still be like, I don't believe that they did it. Something made him, something made him do that. What, what made him do it? What made a person do what they, what they, what they desire to do? See the point I'm making? What made him do it? A person to get caught with another man or woman, they'll say, oh, it was the woman. She, she enticed him. She seduced him. Okay. Denialism, delusion, don't want to accept that reality of the truth. People don't want to be Christians. It's Christianity, but they don't have a Bible to fall back on. So they have no choice but to read the word. But when they read it, they go to Google, they go to study Bibles, everything. They clearly don't read, they don't believe in the word because the Bible says that you're supposed to be taught by the Holy Spirit. Everything, all things. First John even tells you, John is saying in chapter 14, the comforter, the Holy Spirit will teach you all things. Then he tells you, and in, in John, in, in first John's, he tells you, you have an unction, you know, you know all things. Then he tells you in first John 2 and 27, that the anointing that you receive abideth in you, you need not any man to teach you what if true. The anointing teaches you all things. You know you're not being taught by the anointing if you're going on Google. Bible commentary, study Bibles, going to Bible colleges. Where in the Bible you see Bible college? So you see, they're all being taught by man. And they say it's the Holy Spirit. But those who were taught by the Holy Spirit were taught by the Spirit. It's basically like, it's basically like, Waking up one day, right? 
and being able to tell what kind of tree that is, right? Being able to, to know this and to know that and understand what you didn't before. Okay. That's, that's, that's what happens when you, you see the Holy Spirit. It just comes to you. It's like, it's like, it's like you just, like you was there when it was being written. Like, like the Bible, right? With, with us having the Holy Spirit, me having the Holy Spirit, it's like, it's like I was there when the Bible was written. It's like I, I know exactly what they're talking about. I know what they mean. I know the words, like the, 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 the scriptures, everything. There's no confusion, nothing. It's like I was right there when God was writing it out. And we're just all sitting in, a, in, a, in attendance, like we're in class. And listen to, yeah, so right here, you know, Lucifer was, 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 was on the Mount of God with me. And, you know, he, that's in Ezekiel. Isaiah. You see what I'm saying? I'm right there when he's there. So I'm going to write Ezekiel that Lucifer was up there on the Mount of God. And I'm going to talk about, you know, him being kicked out. So I'm, I'm going to mention these. I'm going to mention both of these things in Ezekiel and Isaiah. Oh, Genesis 3. Yeah, I'm going to talk about Christ being born and the serpent going to attack his hill. And he's going to bruise the serpent head. That's in Genesis 3. OK, so Genesis 3 is what I'm about to say. You see, we're, it's like we're right there. You understand the story of Job, the book of Job, everything. The Songs of Solomon. Ecclesiastics, Psalms, right? Proverbs. I come a lot out of I come I come a lot out of the New Testament. But with the Spirit, I understand the whole Old Testament and New Testament. Just whatever the Holy Spirit wants me to teach on, whether it's, it's a year, three, four, five years, one week, two weeks, two, three months on the New Testament, then I will. But I can still go to the Old Testament as well. And I have to speak to, to out of the Old Testament, you know, years ago. You see? So doesn't matter where we go when we have the spirit, we can teach on it because the spirit that's in us was before the Bible was in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. You see that? So now that the Bible say in Corinthians that God will come and dwell in us and be our God walk in us. You see? So everything that he knows about the word, everything that he wrote in the word, he gives to us the same understanding that he has of his word. We have the same understanding. We don't need no Bible college. They can't. Well, how can a, wor a, a world or a man or people that, that are in the world teach anything about the, uh, the word of God? Those who don't have the spirit. Yes, you got to be taught until you believe and your faith increases. And then you receive the spirit, too. If God sees you, sees you fit. OK, first John four and one. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. You see that? Because many false prophets are going out into the world. You have to try it. It's a lot of false people, a lot of false prophets, a lot of false apostles. You see what Paul just said. You see that? So you're just going on the internet, going on Google, Greek, Hebrew, like all this stuff. You don't know who people are. But it goes to show you that some inside of you agrees more against God's word and with darkness than it does with the word of God. Because a true believer is going to be content hearing God's word. They were in the Bible the Pharisees and Sadducees were trying to search scriptures and see if this and that and, and trying to, you know, prove Christ wrong. And, and they were like, what good comes out of Galilee? And they had all these questions and they try to catch them in lies and try to trick them and do all this stuff and try to say, what are the greatest commandments? And do, 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 do. they're like, yeah, that'll answer well. You know what I'm saying? So like, this is the point I'm showing you. They were the ones and these look, look to this day, Jews to this day still are waiting for the Messiah. You know what I'm saying? The Old Testament has been merged with the New Testament. If, if it's not true, how did God make it to where the Old Testament and the New Testament, I'm sorry, the Old, not merged, the Old Testament and the New Testament are put together in one book. So how would the Jews allow it to happen if they were the first original people? You saying we just bullied our way in and just took took the Bible and took the Old Testament and the no, they, come on. God's behind it. Think about it. So we have the Bible. They were once uh, having the Old Testament and having the scripture, uh, the, the, the laws of Moses and the Ten Commandments and all this stuff. Right. But they can't even keep it, though. Even to this day, you look at the Jews that are different parts of the country. They can't obey it. They still committing sins. They still not fought. They still not doing what was commanded them to do, even in the Old Testament. So even the Jews right now and across the world, the ones that's in up north in America, different countries over there in, 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 in Jerusalem, wherever they at, they're still sinning. You understand? So they still sure they still don't believe in Christ. Christ came so you won't sin. 
Christ came to put, the Bible says that it might show the works of the enemy, right? So they can believe what they want to believe, but they're still not living righteous and living holy. And how do we just get the, the Old Testament, right? And then have a New Testament put into it as well. Everybody know Christ came. Everybody knows people that lived before um, were, were, were actual people. Okay, there's documents, there's proof, there's ancient manuscripts, all type of stuff, right? So, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they're of God. So how do you, you don't think, if they're telling you to be careful, they're telling you that Satan comes an angel of light, that means he's going to come, he's going to appear to people to seem like he's the good guy. He has ministers who copy, who try to appear as being Mr. Righteousness, if you got all, you got, now look, let's, let's take those three, let's take those Bible verses right there. Shouldn't you be on guard? But instead, Christianity don't teach you that. Christianity don't tell you. They say, you got to find you a church home. Got to get you a covering. Ain't nowhere in the Bible in the New Testament talking about getting no covering. Ain't nowhere in the New Testament talking about some armor bearers. You see how they, they take from the Old Testament? Paul, Saul had armor bearers as like, like military men, like soldiers. Today they use armor bearers. They, see, they, 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 they just they're like kids. They took all these toys. They took a Hot Wheel uh, 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 car. They took uh, some paint from something. They they took a, a a piece of plastic and they just built uh, their, their own little game. Like you got today, you got false churches talking about they got armor bearers. Where is the word armor bearer used in the Bible? Where at y'all? See, that's remember I just told you we, we go to Old Testament as well. I just, I just broke down the whole New Testament with y'all. So where was the word armor bearer mentioned? With King Saul. That's right. In the Old Testament. What were they used for? They wasn't used the way they being used today. You see what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters? So they, they just like kids. They just took something. They see a beautiful Bible. Their conscience knows that people accept righteousness more than unrighteousness. So everybody wants to portray being good people. Even people commit crimes, they justify why they did it. They make excuses why they did it. Because your conscience knows right from wrong. And the world is intelligent. They know that righteousness is accepted more than unrighteousness. So that's why everybody, look at the Kevin Gates and all these rappers, Little Dirk. They all claim it's some type of false religion. Because it helps their conscience. Even the comedians, they up there. Think about how, and look, I'm not saying they worse than anybody else that sin. Sin is sin. But just think about how wicked comedians, their, their, their job is. They're sitting there laughing to make it seem appropriate and acceptable. Saying things that most people couldn't even say. Oh, yeah, look at you. You know, look at look how fat you are. You look like a, a walrus, <laughs> you know, and they laugh about it because that's supposed to make you put down your guard. Anywhere else if a person was saying the things that a comedian says with a straight face, with eyebrows squinted, it would not be appropriate or acceptable in the world. But because they make it sound humorous, comical, gesturing, and joking, people put their guard down and they just laugh at it because they find pleasure in unrighteousness. But because it's not being directed towards someone, or even if it is, it's in a joking manner. And it's just supposed to be for entertainment. But if you take those same jokes and you say it to somebody in public who's a stranger, they might swing on you. They might shoot you. They might be highly upset and feel disrespected, right? So you see how darkness operates? It makes you delusional. It makes you believe that things is okay because of the way it's dressed up. The, like you look at movies. They're killing. They're shooting. They're fornicating. And, and it's laws against these things. But it's entertainment. That's how you know that man does not control this world. What does it tell you in the book of Daniel? Right? That God rules in the kingdom of men. Right? And give it to who he wants. Right? You have to know this. It mentions this in the book of Daniel. What did Echobedeza say? Though he was a king, what did he say? Those who are prideful, God will do what? Humble. Make you a base. That's right. So, this is what I'm explaining to you. You have to know these things. So the world wants to portray being righteous. That's only because of their conscience. But they find pleasure in the things that are not of God. 
and they make PG-13, rated R, rated X, but they still make it. Why there's no law against pornography? You see that? Like, how are the, the how are the people who are making these 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 pornography uh, movies and these things? They don't they don't get in trouble. You go on porn sites right now; it's legal to see people just having sex. That's so entertaining to a person. Seeing strangers have sex, a man's private area all in the camera screen, woman's bottom all in the breast and everything, just just normal. But if you were to see people having sex in public, people call the cops. <laughs> Y'all get what I'm trying to say? The world is wicked. Delusion makes you feel this is really bad. This is not that bad. This is okay. That's delusion. It's all three are bad. But the world say what is and what isn't. You got wicked people who are forced by the power of God to live somewhat ethical somewhat civil, somewhat law-abiding, right? But in their heart of heart, if they if you take God out the picture, many would do the opposite. Okay? Because they find pleasure in it. This is why the word of God has always been rejected in the world, from the Old to the New Testament. Romans 10 and 17. So then faith comes by hearing, cometh. So faith cometh, cometh by hearing and hear my word of God. You see that? Faith comes by hearing and hear the word of God. The word of God. Not anything else. Romans 1 and 28. And even as they did not like to retain God. Y'all hear that? Like to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient. The word retain means keep hold on to. You see that? So if they don't hold on to the knowledge or keep the knowledge of God in their heart, the word of God. What did they say he did? They did not like to retain God in their knowledge. You see that? In their knowledge. I told you people got knowledge. That's why you know right from wrong. But because they're choosing wrong, guess what happens? God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do things which are not convenient, which is not good for them. You see, this is where you get the the the, the sex and the fornication, the the robbing, the murders, you know, the, the molestations, because they didn't retain God's knowledge, or retain God in their knowledge, in their mind. They wouldn't have molested a child if they would have been a Christian. Because we as Christians know that we're not supposed to look at women to lust. Because in the eyes of God, I mean, we already committed adultery. We know that uh, uh, the Bible talk about uh, evil concupiscence. The Bible talks about uh, um, inordinate affection, right? Sexual morality. We're taught these things. So we know, but the same way that police officer is taught, hey, no seatbelt, that's this and that. This, this is this is deemable to arrest. This is deemable to just give a ticket. They know that the same way we know right from wrong. We've been taught it. Romans three and two for I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Watch this for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness. Having not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Y'all see that? You see what you see today? Why church on Sunday and not church and, and not fellowship and every day? Why tithes and offerings and not letting, letting God truly provide to see if you're truly of God or not? You're begging folks for money, misinterpreting the Bible, misquoting the Bible, using stuff from the laws of Moses and, and you're preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Which one is it? Okay. We don't preach the gospel and still keep the law or things from the law. In the law, you weren't supposed to eat a lot of food. The Jews, that don't, that don't nothing to do with us. When we came to be Christians, the Gentiles, the law was done away with. The Christ fulfilled it. You see? That's why the false Christians, they never understand about what the word of God is saying. They'd be like, like look, you're showing that Paul said the law is done away with. Then they'll be like, well, Christ said, I didn't come to show the law. Of course. That's why he came. You see how you got to take them back to like first grade, the false Christians? 
They don't understand the Bible. Yes, he fulfilled it. That's why I said it's finished. Keeping the law, right? Uh, that's why the Bible said who didn't sin, right? Nor was God following his mouth. The Bible said that he, he submitted himself unto God. He humbled himself. And he has been given a name which is above every name. That, right? That every knee should bow every touch and confess. You read the rest for yourself. And you sit on the right hand of God. So that all happened because of the obedience and the faithfulness. Okay? Of him doing what was commanded to do in the law. That's why he said, you have heard before, but I say now unto you. You see? You have heard before, but now I'm saying. So he was coming, he was, he was fulfilling the old way. Why establishing a new way at the same time? Ain't that amazing? That's right. God made a moon and he made a sun. So he, he thought about how to make us have daylight in the day. And he thought about us having uh, light in the night. You see that? So he came fulfilling the law and establishing it while also teaching us a new way. So he didn't have to do all the things in the law. And not talk about anything that was going to come. Then that means he would have had to raise from the dead and then teach us for three more years about being a Christian and about the gospel. No, he came fulfilled the law because all the law is was being obedient and not sinning. Right. The righteous being holy and doing the things that God said. Right. Now, this is why much of his life, you didn't hear much about it from 12 into 30. That's mental math. Right. What do you think he was doing? There you go. Where was he at at the age of 12 when his parents came back looking for him, right? Mary came looking for him. So anyway, the point I'm trying to make is this. He fulfilled the law throughout his whole life. Not just when you read about it. That's right. Okay. Now, this is what I'm trying to explain to you. So as he was fulfilling the law, he was teaching us a new way. Because once he died and he rose, the law, it, everything was finished. It was done. Once, once he got on the cross, he said, it's finished. Okay. Once what was prophesied, he said, as Jonah was in the well for three days, so would a some man be in the heart of the earth for three days. Okay, there you go. So he finished it, but he taught us in the process of keeping the law a new way, as well as he was obeying the old way. See that? That's right. He didn't break the law. So people go about establishing righteousness. Because they're not obeying what the word of God say. So Satan uses them to teach a false doctrine. And then they come with their own false righteousness. Having a form of godliness, but not in the power of. Titus 2 and 11. For the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. We should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. You see that? We should live so righteously, godly in this present world. Second Timothy 3 and 14. But continue thou in things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You see that? Who, 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 was Paul, who, was, who was Paul talking about? Himself to Timothy. Let's read it again. Second Timothy 3 and 14. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured. Right? Let me, let me show something to y'all real quick. Let me show you how the word of God is the same. You see the word assured? Okay. Let's look at 1 Thessalonians. If I could pull it up real quick. Let's see. Okay, how do I go back? Um. Okay, right here. Oh, no, here you go, up at the top. I got to get Courtney to get the Bible app that I got. Okay, look. Look what he says right here. This is 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, and in much assurance, as ye know, what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. And ye became followers of us and the Lord having received the word and much with the joy of the Holy Ghost. You see that? 
He's saying much assurance. Assurance. What's assurance mean? Assurance. Now look what he says right here. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and has been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. And that from a child thou hast known the Holy Scriptures. Bible commentary. Hebrew, Greek. Right? What some, somebody saying on the internet. Some study Bible. Scriptures. Where are scriptures found? In the Bible. That's right. Okay? Which are able to make thee wise into salvation. You see? Scriptures. Not anything else. Scriptures. Through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works. See that? Scripture. Got to study. Right? Got to obey the scriptures. They're, they're here to teach you what? Reproof. Correction. Instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, not anything less, because God is perfect and is his word. You see that? So this is why you see me saying things are not this, things, things are not right, things are not supposed to be this way. What does it say? All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and it is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, because what they're doing is incorrect. And I'm rebuking him. And I'm correcting him. And I'm showing the instruction in righteousness, in the word. That they truly want to be believers. They want to repent and turn from their wicked ways and truly become saved and, and born again. This is an opportunity. That they may be perfect through the furnace of all good works. Then they won't say, oh, I, I always sin. We all make mistakes. No. If you do what the word say, receive the rebuke. The correction, the instructions, okay, in righteousness, then you will be perfect, duly furnished unto all good works. See that? Second Timothy 2 and 15. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. See? That's it, brothers and sisters. See? You have to study. You have to read. The Bible said all scripture is given by inspiration of God. You see that? All scripture. Look what it says though. Look what it says. Look how they look how they, they, they put it in order. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Now watch what it says. So all those scriptures are profitable for doctrine, which is teaching, right? For reproof, you see that? For correction, for instruction in righteousness, all scriptures, that the man of God may be perfect, truly furnished unto all good works, because all the scriptures are going to put you on the straight and narrow to do what is right. It's not going to tell you to get angry, be frustrated, be patient, be lustful, you know, do what's wrong. Dude, it's going to tell you everything that's right. It's righteousness. There's no, the reason why many don't, can't live perfect and duly furnished. Because you don't know scriptures. You don't know all the scriptures. You don't know enough scriptures. You don't know the 27 books in the New Testament, which is the birth of our religion, the Christian religion. We were first called Christians in Acts 11, verse 26 at Antioch. We were, it was mentioned two other times in the New Testament. In the later chapters of Acts, the king said it when Paul was on trial and Peter said it. Three times was the name Christian mentioned. But see, y'all don't know that. That's why you give in to, oh, I'm not going to say I'm a Christian. No, no, you should. That's biblical, not Christianity. Okay? Oh, yeah, it's okay to be Baptist. No! It's okay to be apostolic. No, it's not. You got to know what 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 10 say. Let there be no division amongst you. That's right. You see? This is why they're doing all this stuff. 
They were taught a false version. They don't know the true version of, they don't know the true word of God. But if you see me telling you how, if I'm sitting here telling you, I'm not going to call myself something other than a Christian. And I just gave you all three places where it's mentioned, right? And then, then, I, then I talked about denominations, right? How can I say I'm going to become a Baptist or Pentecostal apostolic? When I know in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 10, it says, let there be no division. You follow me? Love you all.